following program is an original production of Crosswalks Television. everyone and welcome to On the Edge, a program with, by, and for young people in New York City. Today's episode will be dealing with slightly younger New Yorkers than we usually address. This show is primarily for junior high school students who have a lot of questions about sex and sexuality, HIV and AIDS, puberty, and growing up in general. We hope this program will answer some of your questions and perhaps raise some new ones. I'm Sidel Berlin, your co-host, and please meet Terrence Taylor. Thanks, Sidel. We're here today to help sort through some of these issues. I mean, I remember when I was in junior high, and I was confused about myself and about girls. Well, maybe I still am. And we certainly weren't taught much about HIV and AIDS, and even today, with all the sophisticated talk about birth control and condoms and sexually transmitted diseases, I bet kids still suffer from the same confusion and embarrassment. So we heard some of these questions from 6th and 7th graders <coughs> at a recent visit to Manhattan Country School. When does puberty start? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know what the youngest age is to have safe sex. Hi, I'd like to know what's S&M. When should you start going to a gynecologist? What exactly does a gynecologist do? I'd like to know what a wet dream is. Are condoms fully effective in water? Can I have AIDS before I get HIV? What does AIDS stand for? What are the symptoms of herpes? Are two condoms better than one? What does PMS stand for? What do you do if you're worried about STDs but you want to have a kid? If a woman is pregnant and she has AIDS, does that mean her child will have AIDS? Cool. Are there like tampons for men? Can I have a baby if I don't have my period? How can you tell if you have AIDS? What does HIV stand for? What's my period made up of? Can I have an orgasm without having sex? What's an orgasm? <laughs> what are crabs? <laughs> okay, how do gay women have sex? What other things are there besides having sex? Ooh, okay, some real good questions. Now, after hearing those questions, we decided to let those concerns shape the show. So we invited the kids from Manhattan Country to join others in our studio audience to make sure that their questions were answered. Right. So first, let's clear up some of the confusion about HIV and AIDS. Does anyone here know the difference between HIV and AIDS? The disease before you get right. AIDS. Right, absolutely. When you're HIV positive, you might catch AIDS. Okay, so what determines that you're going to get AIDS if you're HIV positive? Who knows? Because that's the hard part, I think, for people. Anybody know the answer to that? Anybody want to take a try at it? Yes, you know? No, no you don't know. Okay, these days, if you become infected with HIV, and the, re the ways you become infected with HIV are what? Who knows? Sex. Okay, sex, sex, just sex or what? What kind of sex? Blood. Well, let's start with the sex first, okay? What kind of sex? Um, like body fluids. Body um, fluids, okay, meaning what? Sperm. Sperm. Yeah. Vaginal <coughs> fluids, very good, okay. Sharing drug needles. Wait, let's stay with the sex first. <laughs> stay with the sex, no, we're not finished good. with the sex, that but that good. was good, and that was good. All right, but is it just sex? I mean, what if you use a condom and you're very careful are you likely to get infected that way? Well, if the condom pops on If the breaks. condom breaks. But what about if, it, if you have unprotected sex? <coughs> yeah. 
That's what's going to put you at risk, right? It most definitely. And you, I want to get back to your point about sharing drug needles. That is, that is one. So, so far, that's what, two? Two. And, and you said something about blood transfusion? Yes. Okay, what do you want to say about that? Nothing. I just said we're okay. trying to give it Well, the, the blood transfusion is kind of tricky because, you know, a long time ago, they didn't use to test the blood for HIV or the AIDS virus, but now... Now, in the, in the age of the 90s, they test the blood and screen the blood. So if you know someone who's had a blood transfusion before 1985, they may be at risk. But now, in this day and age, it's very, very unlikely that someone can catch it through a blood transfusion. So that's three. Okay. And two more <coughs> ways that you can catch HIV. Yeah? Well, I guess if someone has a cut or something, you know, sharing well, yeah, if it's blood to blood, but that's pretty unlikely, even though the possibility exists. So you, it's not a good idea to do something like blood brothers or blood sisters, which means that you're going to mix the blood up. But is there any other way? What about from a mom, because you asked that question, what about can a mom give her unborn baby or her newborn baby HIV? Well, um, sometimes it's a 50-50 chance, so I don't know, maybe that could have something to do with um, well, the blood when she's giving birth. Well, what's going on? It can. It has something to do with what happens when you give birth. That's true. So some babies do, are infected and some are not. And, and one more that's way. four. Has to do also with the baby. And and moms who nurse their babies, you can pass the virus. Yeah, you can pass it when you are breastfeeding your baby because there's virus in breast milk. So that's, that's what would happen to get you infected. Now, to get you from HIV to AIDS, what would have to happen? Does anybody know? Yeah? You need to get sick. You need to get sick? This is true. Right. You need to get certain infections. Does anybody know what kind of infections? Certain kinds of pneumonia, <coughs> things call, like that? They're different stages mm -hmm. you know, as you go along. You know, when people say you have HIV or AIDS, it's not just one big disease. They're very different stages to each step. So, you know, one person may seem okay while another person may be going through pneumonia. So it's not just one thing. There's a whole different level of other... A range other, of things. Right. Also, there's something called T-cells. And when your T-cell count drops below a certain number these days, they call it 200, then your physician will tell you that you have AIDS, not HIV. Okay. It's Any complicated, other? but you understand a little bit more about that? Okay. There were some other great questions on there. There was something to do with, do guys have to wear tampons, or is there a tampon for a guy, which I think is a fabulous question. Do what? guys have to wear tampons? No. no. Well, why not? Why because not? Because they don't get their periods. They don't get their periods, right. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, like one person asks, what does PMS stand for? Does anybody know what PMS stands for? Okay, yes. Premenstrual syndrome. What does that mean? What's premenstrual syndrome? Yeah. Um, when a woman gets old and. I don't know. Oh, I think you mean menopause. Yeah. Well, that too. You could you could have premenstrual. You could have menstrual syndrome when you get old and be, and be cranky. But we're talking about premenstrual syndrome, meaning right before you get your period. You get moody. You get cramped. You, you could. Get angry. Well, we can't really blame all of that on premenstrual syndrome, but... Well, but there is because your hormones change. True. And a lot of times that's what happens. That's what premenstrual syndrome is. And it sometimes happens to women and sometimes it doesn't. And the good thing about it is that if you have cramps or you feel moody or you feel blue or kind of sad, there's something you can do about it. You don't have to live with it because you can ask your physician or your care provider and there's lots of new... They're not drugs exactly, but they'll help you get over some of that. So if anybody in here or any of your friends or your moms have premenstrual syndrome, you can tell them that they don't have to suffer with it. So it was a real good question to ask. There were some other ones. Do you remember any of the questions that were asked? What were some of the other ones? There were HIV questions. There were puberty questions <coughs> about growing up. There were questions about what? Condoms. Condoms, OK. Condoms. Are two condoms better than one? Some Somebody asked that question, which is actually a fabulous question. Who knows the answer to that? Um, no, because like the friction of the two condoms will make them break easier. Fabulous. Did you all hear that? Mm -hmm. That's the friction will make them break more easily. So it's a no-no, right? Yeah, it's a big no-no. 